another episode of Search It Up with Sienna, the web series where I use IMDb to discover and talk about all different types of movies and TV shows, and how the people in front of and behind the camera not only make it all possible, but are somehow all interconnected. I talk directly with the talent about their backstories and experiences on and off set, and what they're up to today. On my last episode, we talked about The Office, which features Mindy Kaling. Mindy Kaling was also in Inside Out, so today we're going to be talking about Inside Out. And joining me is the screenwriter for the movie, Meg LaFove. Inside Out is an animated feature film about an 11-year-old girl named Riley, whose emotions are also characters in the movie. Some of their voices are played by Bill Hader, Amy Poehler, and Mindy Kaling. Before she became a screenwriter, Meg LaFove was a producer and president of Jodie Foster's company, Egg Pictures. She transitioned into writing with such movies and TV shows as Gigantic, The Good Dinosaur, Captain Marvel, and of course, Inside Out, for which she was nominated for an Academy Award. And now, without further ado, here's my interview with Meg LaFove. You worked as a producer and president of Egg Pictures, Jodie Foster's company. How did you transition into screenwriting? Oh, such a good question. You know, I decided that I was getting older and I had come to L.A. to um, to write, but I kind of, well, you know, I'm not going to say I got scared, but I think I got nervous about doing it, uh -huh. right? Because sometimes the thing that you want to do the very most is what you don't do because you're afraid you'll fail. Yeah, so that's you do something right. kind of right next to it, right? Uh-huh. Um, so it feels like you're doing it, but it feels safer because you don't want it as much as you want that thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I did something, but I was great because I learned so much from Jody about storytelling and I made lots of friends and support system. And then one day I decided, well, if I don't do this, I'm never going to do it. I was getting older and I was like, well, I'm just going to do it. And I quit and it was crazy because I had the best job in Hollywood. And then I spent a good long time learning the craft of writing, you know, just it's, you know, in the movies, sometimes people like um, the movie is about them making that leap, right? Yeah. But then in real life, it takes a lot of time to learn how to do it, right? Like you're an actor, right? Yeah. So you know that it's a skill you have to learn, right? Mm -hmm. Just like anything, you have to learn how to do all these different layers of skill so yeah. that you can... So I, I took years to do that until finally I had a script that I felt like, okay, that's a movie. And then I got an agent and a manager and eventually ended up at Pixar. Wow, that's so cool. And um, how did you get involved with the movie Inside Out? Um, somebody at Pixar read a script I wrote and asked me to come up and meet Pete Docter. Um, I, I would be writing with him. So always you have to meet the director and see if you click, but really, if you're going to write together, um, it's super important, right? And so I met him and, you know, I expressed to him what a fan I was. I will admit I did. I was like, I'm such a big fan <laughs> um, because I love his movies, you know, um, Monsters, Inc. and Up and oh, just yeah. every, it's so imaginative. And it was really exciting to be able to work with him and help him, you know, Inside Out is his movie, it's his concept, and he's a writer on it, and obviously he directed it. So I was really there as a writer to, of course, bring myself to it, but to really help him do his movie. Yeah. What was the writing process like um, with Inside Out working with Pete Docter and Ronnie Del Carmen? Ronnie Del Carmen is also a genius, a genius, amazing. And then the other person in the room with us was Josh Cooley, who oh. was the head of story. And story is kind of what you do in animation is you, what's called break the story. You put it in cards right on the wall and in index cards, the whole story. And then when that feels good, you go and write it. And then they take those pages and you get a room full of artists, like 10 of them or even more. And then they take each scene and they draw it. So in animation, they draw every single frame if my hand was moving. Yeah. But in story, they would just draw here to here. So it's called storyboarding. And then they storyboard the whole movie. And mm -hmm. then you go into a theater with a lot of people from Pixar. Uh -huh. And you watch the movie. The, the Disney logo comes up. There's sound. It's been edited. People in the building all do the voices because you're not going to go get the actors to do it. So like um, a fun story is 
one of the assistants in the building, when they were doing Wally this way, she was the voice of Eva. And then when it came time to make the actual animated movie, they loved her voice so much that they left her in. Oh, wow. So that's, Eva is an assistant at, at, at Pixar, who's the nicest, uh, greatest person. And she's, she became an actress because she was the voice of Eva. So um, I, I did that. So what we would do is the four of us would sit in a room and we would just talk and talk and talk about, you know, Inside Out is both from a girl's perspective, who's 11 year old, which I had a lot. I was 11 once and I was a girl, so I had a lot to give, but everybody in the room was 11 once and remembers what that feels like. Yeah. And then I I talked a lot about and thought a lot about what it was like to be Joy, who's more like the parent to the 11 year old girl, right? Yeah. She's more like the parent who wants her to be happy. Uh -huh. So we would do a lot of that talking and storytelling and thinking of what the story could be. And once it was all up in cards, I would then go write it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and actually, I think Josh Cooley, I did Toy Story 4 once. Um, I actually didn't interview anybody, but I know right. that I think he wrote some of, or directed some of the Toy Story movies, right? Yeah, he, he went from Inside Out to direct Toy Story 4. Yeah, he yeah. wrote Inside Out with me, and then he went to direct Toy Story 4. Yeah, um, and I've seen, um, I actually watched in into the unknown it was about the making of frozen 2 um and right. then the writer of it um she was talking about in the documentary that she kept like a diary of how of elsa and like what she was doing do you have like any certain strides you used to try to like be the characters oh that's a really good question well i was super lucky because very quickly the cast the actors were going to who were going to do it were cast so mm -hmm. I had this great opportunity to sit in a room with Bill Hader as he walked around the table <laughs> talking and being a fear. And I got to go to New York with, with, with Pete and Josh and Ronnie. And we sat in a hotel room, the big kind of like conference room with Amy Poehler as she read through the script. And we just kind of, sh she would just, we would just shoot out lines and she was so funny and so giving. And she'd be like, oh, that's so funny. Like she was so positive. She was joy, like it was crazy. Her joy was to make other people feel joyful. And so I just was able to hear her in my head, you know? And, yeah. and so it was so much easier for me because I had these amazing people to hear in my head, Mindy Kaling and, yeah. and, and Phyllis. And, and then what you do as you get closer to animation, uh, the real actors are coming in and doing the voices and you get to go into the room, not into the booth, but outside the booth and you hear them and sometimes you're writing lines and sending them out. And Josh Cooley was really, really good at that. <laughs> he would just like send all these lines in and, um, and you'd watch them spitball and it was so fun. Oh my gosh, it was that so- That sounds fun. like a lot of fun. Yeah, and what's kind of funny is what I was just, I was just thinking about this is Mindy Kaling and Phyllis Smith, I think that their their characters seem very similar in Inside Out to their characters in The Office. I don't know if you've watched The Office or not, but Mindy Kaling in The Office is very like, tries to be cool and like, like very like, oh, what's that? Like, I feel like that connects. And then Phyllis is kind of like just a shy voice in the office and same in Inside Out. So I was just thinking about that. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I guess that's funny. You know what? That's interesting because you're an actress. So, um, you know, often actors love that because that's how they get cast because people can see that, oh, you can do that really well, right? Yeah. You do disgust really well in your I still like you like other actors might do discuss and you're like oh I don't like you at all you're mean but when she does it you're like oh my god you're the coolest person ever can I be your friend right yeah so but sometimes actors don't like that because they get typecast right and mm -hmm. everything they're they're getting cast in is the same all of a sudden yeah. so they'll do something crazy and and way off left center so that we, we can see and writers and directors and everybody as a creative person you can get typecast into a genre or into like after Inside Out, everybody wanted me to write animated movies. And I was like, but I already, I did that. I wanna, I can do all of these other things. Um, yeah. So it's fun. It's part of being a creative person, right? Yeah. Is you need, you wanna keep stretching and seeing what other things you can do too. Uh huh. And um, do you have a favorite character or a character you most relate to in Inside Out? Oh, well. Well, they're all part of me, right? Because yeah, when, you, when you're a creative person, I'll like my anger's in there and 
Um, but really the most, the most fun character to write for me was sadness. Like um, I remember the day I was writing and all of it, and what the, my favorite part about writing is sometimes the story takes over and I almost become like the watcher, right? Like in my imagination, it's like a dream and the characters just start doing their own thing. And I'm like, wow, that's interesting as I'm typing. <laughs> and all of a sudden sadness laid down. She was like, oh, I don't know. And she just laid down and I was like, oh, there she is. There she is, that's what she's gonna do. So she was really fun for me to write. And I'm not gonna say I was a sad kid, but I was a very kind of watcher. I, I was more shy. Like I'm amazed that you at this age are out there doing this. I mean, I was not you. I was pretty shy. I was, I just read my books. And so I'm very impressed by you, but I was much more like uh, sadness in terms of a watcher and shy. So she, I liked her a lot. You seem much more like joy. You're, yes. you're out there, you're making stuff happen. You're going for it. It's pretty impressive. Yes, thank you so much. And um, what other talents did you work with? Like any other talent? I know you mentioned you work with the actors for a little bit in a, like a conference room, but was there anybody else that you worked with closely during production? Well, you know, um, Pete Doctor's working with all the departments, right? Like all the production designers and yeah. the character designers. And um, so you do, on Inside Out, um, I was pretty much, because we were going so fast, really just stayed with the story department. Yeah. When I worked with The Good Dinosaur, I was lucky enough to be influenced. I didn't work directly with them, but we had character designers going for the dinosaurs at the same time. And the beautiful production design definitely influenced the the um the movie I mean always that design affects the movie um I remember once at one meeting Pete came back and he was like well I was over I can't remember which where he was some department <laughs> and he was like we moved long-term memory and I was like what do you mean you moved it and he's like well it's, it was out in this edge and now it's going to be down in the center and I was like but it's a road movie so <laughs> I guess okay we're changing it and uh you just had to be able to really iterate and move right like you yeah. couldn't be like this was my idea and this is what I'm doing yeah you had to be like okay what else are we doing and yeah. I think that happens because you know those the people that I'm working with are artists who probably have drawn in their books mm -hmm. they were your age right they the way that you are learning your acting craft they learn to draw by drawing in lots of sketchbooks yeah so they're very used to sketching 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 Mm -hmm. And as a writer, you have to be able to do that too. If you're going to go into that process, right? You have to be able to be like, okay, I wrote this. Yeah. Okay, go again. Go oh. again. Go again. <laughs> oh, sometimes it gets tiring, but it's really fun if you can kind of get into the groove of it and not hold on too tight. Yeah, definitely. And the character of Riley is 11 years old. Like me, I'm also 11. Um, and I can relate so much to her. Um, when you were writing Inside Out, did you know it would have a big impact um, like it has on people today? Oh, good question. You know, it's funny. When Pete talked to me about, when I first came on the movie, he had already been working on it. And he, he was just starting to think that maybe joy would be on the journey with sadness. I believe he originally had her on with fear and oh. that what he wanted, maybe wanted to say was that sadness is a thing that connects us mm -hmm. and it's really an important thing. And I remember saying to him once, oh, that could change the world. And he was like, don't say that because you get a little nervous, right? Like, ah, let's just, let's just do the movie. And, and, and so we really tried um, to stay on what's the best story, right? Like, yeah. And give ourselves as much as we could to it and love it as much as we could and make it as good as we could. And then you just have to hope, right? Yeah. And then if maybe you put your heart into it, people will see that heart and they'll feel their heart, right? Definitely. And that's, as a creator, that's the most you can do because you never know. Like I put as much of my heart as into the good dinosaur, mm -hmm. right? I put my heart into Captain Marvel. You just never know where it will go, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hope you're enjoying my interview with Megal Fo. Be sure to tune in next week for part two. See you then.